Hi, <clears throat> right, how to test your water to find out how hard it is. Firstly, you need to fill up a bottle with hard water from usually from your kitchen tap. And then we need to take the tablets that come with the test kit. We need to add them one at a time and then give the bottle a little shake. So there we go, one tablet in. And you'll find the water goes a kind of red, purpley kind of colour. And we need to keep adding tablets one at a time until the water turns from red to blue. Okay, so and as we started with a full packet, it's pretty easy to work out how many we've put in because you need to know how many. <clears throat> keep going. That was four. Well, we know it's probably going to take a few more. So there we go. Five. Now yours will probably take a, quite a few more tablets than that. But where I live, ironically, the water's not all that hard. So uh, five tablets it took to turn it to blue. Okay. Okay, so now we know how to use the water hardness test kit, we can find the volume or capacity as we sometimes call it. For this example, we're going to say that to turn the water blue took eight tablets, which is shown here. That tells us that we then have a hardness of 21 degrees coming into the house and a total capacity of 1,333 litres. We then need to deduct 150 litres for each person in the household as it's shown here. So two times 150 is 300 litres, so we need to deduct 300 litres from 1,333, which gives us a volume of 1,033 litres. That's the volume that we need to set because our water took eight tablets to turn blue. If it took 10 tablets to turn blue or 11 tablets, then you'd be calculating, calculating a different capacity. Okay. Hi, so now you've worked out the capacity of your water softener. You need to plug the water softener in and you will get a readout something like this, which is the normal display. Now we need to go into programming mode to change any of the parameters. So let's uh, press the setting button. Okay. Press and hold that for five seconds and you can, you'll see the display change. There we go, we have set. And at the moment, set is flashing on, we've got T and W, time, and it's flashing on 21. So you need to set that for the correct time of day. And to do that, you press the up button. So we'll set it, say it's uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, you need to set it for 10 or whatever, 11 o'clock, it's fine if that's the time. And then you need to press the right hand button to move across to minutes and set that for the correct amount of minutes, whatever time it is. Okay, then you need to press the right button again and change the day. Whatever day of the week it is, it needs to be showing there. So we'll say it's Saturday today. Okay, so now we've set the time and the day. Okay, we press the setting button again and we come to CTFD. FD means flow demand, so that's what it's set at at the factory, so you shouldn't need to change that. If it says anything else other than FD, you need to press the up arrow, you'll see it will scroll through. But FD is the one you need. Press the setting button again, and we have unit volume. Now that should be on litres, and at the moment this one says gallons, so we're going to change that to litres. It also has tonnes, we don't want that. So we're going to set it to litres. OK, press the setting button again. Set RE off. That should be off, so don't change it to anything else. Leave it off. OK, the next setting we've got is for litres. Uh, the, the actual capacity of the machine, the one that you worked out after testing your water hardness. So, and this one says 
A hundred thousand. Well, we don't want that. So we'll press the up button to change the digit. Each digit you can change individually. And we take that round to naught because we're going to set ours at a capacity that we found earlier, which was 1033. So we need to move the cursor along to the right into the column where we want to set a thousand. There you go, we have a thousand and we want to set 33. So we move the cursor along with the middle button and we'll take it to three, one, two, three, move the cursor along again, one, two, three. Okay, now we've set the capacity to 1,033 litres. Yours may be completely different, but whatever is correct. Press the setting button again, and we go to DO off. Now, we normally set day override to 7. This is an override so that if you go away on holiday, it will do a quick regeneration once a week, just to keep the water inside your water softener fresh. Okay. Done. Next we have set RT, uh, that's regeneration time, it's normally set for 2am as it is here and we can make that any time we like so we can change that to 3am, 4am, any day, of the, any time of the week, or any time of the day. But we normally want it to regenerate at 2am because that's a time when most people don't use any water. Your circumstances may be different. For example, if you'd fitted the water softener in a wardrobe in your bedroom, you probably don't want it to regenerate at 2 a.m. So you can change that to any time you like. Okay, so 2 a.m. is normal. Let me press setting again. Now we're coming into settings for the regeneration cycle. You don't need to change any of these. These are all factory set. So we've got backwash 02, BD, brine draw, 40 minutes, rapid rinse, 6 minutes, Brian fill, seven minutes, and then we're back to the normal display. And the display will scroll and display the remaining amount of liters. As you use water, that number will count down until it reaches zero. When it reaches zero, it will then wait until 2 a.m. before it regenerates. It's also displaying the time of regeneration and the day override that we set at seven. So it gives you a little bit of information there. If you would like to test all of your plumbing connections on your drain connection, that sort of thing, you can make the water softener regenerate. To do that, press the right button and hold it for five seconds. When we do this, it will go into an immediate regeneration. Okay, so it's saying go to backwash. Backwash is the first cycle of the regeneration. When it gets to backwash, the display will tell you how long it's going to stay in backwash and it will count down as it goes through that cycle. It takes a, a few moments to get to backwash and then the display will change slightly. So we'll just wait a couple of moments until uh, we get to backwash. If you're interested, I've taken the back off of this unit and this is what's happening behind the scenes. This big wheel here is turning around and this piston here is being driven down by the gears on this cog and the cog is driven by this electrical motor here as you probably realized it's low voltage so you can't get any yeah, problems there's also a micro switch up here fitted on some models sometimes people want to power a pump or whatever when it regenerates but most people don't need that okay so now we're back to the display and it says BW for backwash, O2. So it's going to be in backwash for two minutes. So that gives you a chance to check your drain connections because water will be coming out of the drain when it's doing that. We can cycle it onto the next cycle by pressing the middle button again. And now it's saying go to brine drawer. Brine drawer is when it sucks up the brine. We can take it through each of these cycles and Again, we can see what's going on behind. The valve is driving the gears. This uh, part here, the brine valve, is, again, is about to be depressed. And the piston is almost all the way down. This is the position where it will suck the salty water out of your salt cabinet, which is used to clean the resin and make the resin good 
to soften the water for the next few days. We should be at brine draw any moment now. As you can see, once we get to brine draw, it tells us how long it's going to stay in brine draw, 40 minutes in this case. And as it goes through that, it will count down. We can press the middle button again to cycle on to the next cycle. Water softener, when it regenerates, is a little bit like a washing machine. It has a, a number of different cycles, rinses, backwash, etc., etc. These are all cycles that are designed to optimise the, the uh, resin and minimise water usage. That's the beauty of an electronic water softener. You can set the cycles to any cycle, any length you like. Uh, but I wouldn't advise you to tamper with them because we've tested these cycles to keep them as low as possible but make sure you get lots of soft water. So now we're going to rapid rinse. That cycle, we're going to jump past that. The rapid rinse cycle is there. Any, any salt that's left in the brine or the resin is rinsed off and sent down the drain because you don't really want salty water when you open your taps. So we just add that cycle to give you that reassurance. Next cycle is BF or brine fill. In this cycle, the water softener controller puts some water in with your salt, which dissolves some of the salt, and that brine, as we call it, is there ready to be sucked up and passed through the resin the next time the water softener regenerates. This is the water that you would see in your cabinet when the salt level is low enough, and we're gonna do a brine fill for seven minutes, as you can see there. Okay, we'll press the middle button again, it's now just shows us a set of lines because what it's doing now is just going to what we call the home position. When it gets to the home position, the display will go back to normal and it will start counting down your capacity again. Again, you can see what's going on inside. Wheels are going around. Any moment now, it should stop. There we go. And the water softener goes back to displaying the normal capacity left. I'll just blow through the flow meter and you'll be able to see that the meter will have gone down. There we go. 1,027 litres. So I've blown through the meter to make it spin around as if water were going through it and it's counted down. Okay, check out our other videos for any other information you might need. Thanks a lot. Bye.